let me talk to you guys for a second. Um, I've been, I got tagged in this by someone I actually know, and I've also had a couple of people ask me questions and send me messages about this. So I'm like, obviously people are concerned enough for this to have to actually be a video. And it's about catch cans, right? So it's about catch cans causing back pressures and not having a catch can and catch cans are a gimmick and a waste of money and all this sort of stuff. Now, I am not sponsored by any of the catch can companies. I will call the catch can company out if it's faulty or does not work or it's not fit for purpose or whatever. And I'm not a pro catch can person either. If they didn't work, I wouldn't even talk about them. I wouldn't even have it on my own car. Now, let's start with the, the whole thing of uh, what is auto expert and places like that. Now, I don't know who they're paid by or whatever, but stating that a catch can does nothing and that the cars are, and engines are designed to deal with oil blow-by mixed with EGR diesel soot is... That is complete and utter, utter bollocks. That is crap. Stop lying. Because that is ridiculous. In all the years I was dealing with the mechanic stuff, and I get a bit annoyed with this because it's crap. You're telling people not to do this stuff to their cars, and they destroy motors because they get that clogged up and actually cook a motor. So it's... Saying that catch cans don't work with and not having one, that's just, that is just stupid, right? I've full well seen what happens if a car goes on long trips all the time, if it's massive drives and all that sort of stuff, they still clog up. You have intercoolers dripping oil out of them because over the time the intercooler fills up with oil, therefore the intercooler doesn't work properly. It's not cooling the charged air. So it, it leads on to massive issues. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go into completely that, all of that right now. But the real thing is with the, especially the 200 series, because that's what I own, that's what I talk about a fair bit, especially on this channel, um, is that the Proven 200s, someone did a video who I'm, I'm not naming, because there's plenty of videos out there. Um, this guy's saying he's well known, whatever. I don't care. Don't care who you are. You probably don't care who I am. But what I'm saying is they do a video and they remove the oil cap and they show the back pressure, which is little to nothing anyway. I've seen standard cruisers with no catch can with bigger back pressure than what he showed. Anyway. He then removes the cap, the bloody catch can, and the back pressure goes away. Of course the back pressure is going to go away because you're venting it to atmosphere. So there's going to be like no back pressure. Jesus. Anyway, he puts the cap back on, da da da, the pressure comes back, which is obvious, you're closing the system again. But then he does another video and just links it up as normal and the the back pressure is minimal or whatever. Now, do I say that, that back pressure it had is bad? Not necessarily. But what I do ask is the fact that, is he telling you all the truth? That could be a kink line. That could be not installed correctly. And it could actually have a blocked filter element. What people don't realize, especially coming into winter and stuff, you get a lot of moisture mixed with the oil, which creates a milky sort of consistency. And when that goes cold, like when it cools down after the car's been sitting, it goes like a jelly and that gets stuck to the filter, the filter element, so the catch can filter, and that creates more pressure. You do have a pressure relief valve on the side of the catch can, so that should alleviate a lot of that, but that can cause issues. So people try to do the whole 40,000 interval of a catch can filter it's all different for each individual car because your car may breathe a lot heavier than another car will so some cars can go the 20 to 40 thousand k service interval for the catch can filter and then there's other cars they're lucky to get 10 15 thousand depends on the driving you're doing depends on the wear and tear on your engine 
a huge amount of factors and it also depends on if the thing's installed properly, right? Other people say, I've seen issues with DPFs and this and that. Now this gets me onto another subject. The newer engines, especially the newer 200 series, the newer end of them, should I say, with the DPFs also run the ridiculously thin oil. They run like a 0W30 C2 engine oil. So it's ridiculously thin. Wouldn't take much to push that past the rings. Honestly, it wouldn't. So having D DPF issues and stuff, not gonna talk on that. There could be a huge amount of factors around that. But cruisers have known for the DPF issue anyway, and it ain't blow by. It is the injectors. It was known. The the other ones that were known were the Hiluxes, the Prados. They were and the High Aces, the two point eight liters. They were prone for it. They were belching white smoke out the back. Still have that issue. I think Toyota's under a lawsuit right now. Class action lawsuit to it. So. Yes, what I'm getting to is catch cans. Should you have them on your car, it's up to you. Do they work? Proof's in, in the pudding. I have it on my own car. I've physically seen other vehicles that I'm installing, hundreds of them over the years, and they are chalk and cheese. You pull them, the top hats off or the manifolds off, they're spotless in there, just like a light coating of powdery EGR soot. Light coating, but it's not sticking to the walls. It's completely fine. So do I say that you should have them? Up to you. I have it on my own car, it works. I also have a diesel pre-filter on my own car because it works. I don't have stuff on my car if it doesn't work. Like the reason why I pulled the flash loop catch can off, it was too small for the V8 and that if you want to know back pressure issues, that was causing back pressure issues. When you take an oil cap off and it blows off in your hand, that is a back pressure issue, not what the ProVent 200 is doing. Anyway, this video is going on a little bit longer. I just thought I would come out and say this. I don't normally like doing these types of videos because it's like he said, she said, and you're arguing, just stating that in all the years, of working on cars, installing catch cans, seeing them through their whole life in cruisers, not just cruisers, but multiple different cars. And yeah, are they an issue if they install correctly, maintained correctly? Now they're, they're two things you gotta remember, installed correctly and maintained correctly. If you've already got the third one correct. Now the third one, is have you got the right catch can for your engine? Because if it doesn't flow as fast as what your engine breathes, then you're gonna have an issue. So yeah. Anyway guys, I'm gonna leave that with you. Um, yes. Anyway, take care. <laughs>